For SMA inverters with built-in Wi-Fi, it is possible to configure limited or zero export during the commissioning process. For an SMA inverter with an energy meter directly connected to the inverter, after connecting to the inverter's wireless network, open a browser and log in as an installer. As we make our way through the configuration process, we will come to a step for configuring the energy meter. Here we need to make sure that the energy meter has been found and that it is directly connected to the inverter. Click Save and Next. To configure limited or zero export, we need to enable feed-in management at the grid connection point. So select that to on. Here we can see the nominal PV system power of the inverter and we have a number of options for how we limit export. In this example, we're going to limit export to a percentage of the inverter's rated power. To set the limited export to a percentage value, enter into the tab and input the value that you want. In this case, we're going to select 33.3%. Depending on the requirements of the network connection agreement, you may need to configure fallback settings such that if the inverter were to lose communication with the energy meter, it would default to a restricted output power. In this instance, we're going to set this value to the same as the active power limitation. Alternatively, you may need to set an export limitation in terms of watts. In this case, select operating mode of active power limitation and select fixed specification in watts. Here we have a Sunny Boy 1.5 which has 1500 watts rated power. In this example, we're going to limit it to 500 watts. Again, with the fallback active power limitation, depending on your connection agreement, you may need to configure this to the same value as the approved active power limit. For Sunny Boy AV-40 series inverters, the procedure is slightly different. In addition to activating feed-in management at the grid connection point, you will also need to turn on system control and power limitation. In this section, you are able to configure the fallback settings. So for the example used above, where we have limited the export of the inverter to 33.3% of the rated power, we would set the fallback settings accordingly. We should also select grid desk connection for 0% feeding in to no. Once configured, you would then click Save and Next. We can see now that the inverter's active power limitation has been activated. If, for example, some loads were to come on and the power draw from the site went up, we can notice that the inverter is able to increase its output to respond to this increase in demand. Similarly, if those loads suddenly disappear, the inverter and energy meter will detect this and return back to the active power limit set point. In this way, you can verify during commissioning that you have correctly set the active power limit. You can do a similar test by removing the connection to the energy meter to ensure that you have fallback settings correctly configured. We have now configured active power limitation of the inverter during commissioning.